All right, so for this one, we have another patron requested review. This one is Crimson Tower, which was requested and written by Sarkis Avakian, and it feels a lot like an anime in written form. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So when I say this feels like an anime in written form, I mean that, like, the plot and characters and action even all seem very heavily inspired by anime. And in fact, this one actually comes with a soundtrack too, which was kind of nice to listen to while I read, and it... that one also feels kind of like something you would see in a lot of anime. And that's not a necessarily good or bad thing when I say that. It just is a thing. Uh, people who are really into anime would probably appreciate that. People who hate it would probably hate that. But, you know, that's all just what do you think about it? and well okay obviously this is a review so it's all opinion based but nonetheless uh just saying that it's based on anime i'm not saying is a good or bad thing i'm just saying it's or not based on anime but fuck it you know what i mean but <laughs> just me saying it's inspired by anime isn't good or bad it just is the story for this one it starts off and then it goes off in a much different direction than i thought it would cuz it starts as uh, the main character kai is just this rich kid, you know, his, his family's rich, he kind of hates being rich though because it's uh, stifling, and so his father eventually sends him off to this university, and as soon as he gets there, now I was thinking there would be some sort of like mystery element, or maybe Kai would get introduced to, I, I don't know, some something, but it just, he shows up there, and then he meets some people who can do magic there, and then he's like, oh yeah, I'm also a magic user. Yeah. Like, he apparently already knew about all this, and he's already fully trained in everything. So, th that was weird, and then the story goes into a direction of uh, demons try to get through to Earth uh, in their area, and so they have to stop them. And that's the main thrust of the story, but it just uh, took me off guard is all. <laughs> like, I was expecting it to go... It, even though I knew it was anime-based, I was expecting it to go in a much different direction than that. But, you know, once I had adjusted to that, I, I thought it was alright. You know, I thought that the story with the demons and everything, at first it's just demons come in, they fight them, demons come in, they fight them, and it's carried a little bit more um, from their character interactions, which this isn't a particularly long book either, so I think had this been longer and the whole first half had been that, I would have gotten bored of it, but by being shorter, it it works out better, I think. And then the second half as well, there are some twists and turns in the story, and it winds up being different than I thought it would be. Like, <laughs> again, because, you know, at first I thought it was going to be some standard, like, I don't know, mystery or somewhat realistic thing, or maybe uh, he'd get introduced to magic, but it, then it just, like, oh, he's already knows about it and everything, and he's just fighting demons. And then the second half... There's some uh, doubt about who the real bad guy is, and that there's a little bit more uh, gray morality, let's call it. And so, without giving too much away, yeah, I, I liked that it changed directions. I liked that it took me off guard those two times, because I never knew what to expect. Even going in knowing, like, okay, this is definitely anime-inspired and all that, I, I just... It caught me off guard, and I always have to give points to something for catching me off guard. Even if it's not in the best way... Just being able to surprise me is enjoyable. Now, the character cast in this, I would say, is passable for the most part. Like, most of them are just, you know, anime character archetypes. And that probably would have been better if there had been fewer of them. But as it stands, there's just a fairly large number of major characters in this who all need to get some screen time and they all need to do some things. And like I said, this is a pretty short book, so having that many really just means that none of them get all that much development. Like, some of them have one or two moments or aspects of their personality that stood out to me, and I was like, oh, I, I remember that person, but for the most part, they're just kind of there, and they talk a little weird. Like, they're not even quirky or have unusual personalities or anything, they just, they just talk weird. The only character that I wound up liking and... I kind of hate myself for admitting this because I feel like I should hate him, is the main character, Kai. And I feel like I should hate him because he's... 
not quite Mary Sue, but he is very close to Mary Sue territory because, like I said, he just shows up and he already knows how to do magic and everything. Uh, they introduce him to demons and stuff, which apparently he didn't know much about before, which is odd, but whatever. And then he's able to fight them super well along with everyone else, and he never really... Well, I wouldn't say he never screws up, but he never makes any major mistakes or anything, and he gets along pretty well with almost everyone except the villains. So he's definitely approaching Mary Sue territory, but he's he's honestly just cool. <laughs> I I liked him. He, he has this uh, way of approaching everything with just total deadpan, like very little emotion to it, and it makes him just fun to watch. You know, he's kind of sarcastic at a few points, but for the most part, he's just like, yep, I'm a blank slate, but they made him so blank that he go that he somehow circles back around to having a personality. I know that might sound weird, but he's just so stoic that it winds up being uh, weirdly endearing, I think. And um, the biggest area where that works is how he mentions how he's not at all interested in forming any sort of relationship, you know, not with men or women or anybody. And I don't believe that the book goes so far as to sp as to outright state that he is asexual or anything, but I, I wouldn't shock me if that were the case. You know, he just, eh, he's not interested in sex or anything, even though occasionally some stuff that I would, uh, some stuff I would classify as harem hijinks shows up, but Kai just rather than freaking out about it, just total stone face is like, hey, get get out of here, I'm not interested, which is pretty fun. And it even gets to the point where, like, actual succubi will try and um, seduce him, and he just doesn't care about it. So I've, I found that pretty entertaining as well. The world building and magic and stuff in this is, I mean, it, it's anime. You know, there's magic, p some people can use it, it's never really explained how it works, but they just use it for fighting anyway, so it's not that big a deal. Um, there's other worlds with like demons and elves and stuff, which sometimes get along with Earth and sometimes they don't, and it's all kept secret for some reason. I actually don't know why they bother keeping it secret. It, it's just stuff like that. So the only thing really left about this book that I want to talk about that actually matters is the way it's written, because this isn't really written in prose, it's written almost more like a script for a movie or television show or something, and I... it, it kind of works for me. Like, it's not perfect because it switches between past and present tense at a few points, which is awkward, and, you know, most, most scripts are just written in present tense the whole way through. And if, had it just been in past tense all the way through, that would have been fine, but Switching back and forth feels really awkward. Um, but that said, it's mostly like, for dialogue, it'll just be like, Kai, colon, says this, and then this person, colon, blah, blah, blah. So that sort of thing. And then when action comes up, it'll describe, like, they do this and that and that. And it, it winds up working pretty well. I think that had this been written in prose, it probably would have been, like, two or three times as long. As it stands now, it's a much shorter more fun read. Uh, and it kind of feels like maybe this was originally intended to be like a graphic novel or a show or something, and if that's the case, I think it would work pretty well as a graphic novel or as a manga, because, you know, the story and everything is definitely very visual and very action-oriented, and those things, they tend to work a little bit better when it's, uh, well, when it's visual. <laughs> you know, they they work a bit better that way than when it's a book. So I think this one is kind of being held back by the format it's in. But that said, I, I get it. You know, making a graphic novel or something takes a lot more work and a lot more talent, and usually it requires multiple people to do, whereas writing a book is just, you know, you write it and then it's out there. So Crimson Tower. Um, as with all my Patreon quests, it's, there's an Amazon link below, so if you want to check it out on Kindle, it's pretty cheap and... You know, if you're into that sort of thing, I think it's worth spending a couple hours reading through. You know, it's not gonna blow your mind or anything, but I, I enjoyed it just fine. Thank you to everyone for watching, including, as always, the patrons whose names are here. And a special shout out to 
Apo Savalainen, Alex Humva, Ashley Watson, Ava Toomer, B. Quinn, Brother Santodes, Christopher Quinten, Emily Miller, Joel, Johnny St. Clair, Madison Lewis Bennett, Ronnie, the author of this book, Sarkis of Akian, Taylor Briggs, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Topher Wheeler, Vacuous Silas, and finally, Vavictus. You guys are all pretty great. I don't think I would be able to do this sort of thing without your support, so it, it really does mean a lot to me. And if you haven't rated this video, commented on it, and subscribed to my channel, then hurry up and do that, please. I, I need your help. And, well, no, that's everything. I'll see you later.